So first of all, I apologise for this sound. My It's very echoey in this room today and my microphone's picking it all up. So I apologise for that. But anyway, this video is all about this latest retro gaming coffee table. And this is probably going to be one of the best ones that I've ever done. And yeah, it's a solid table, not like the MDF tables we've done in the past. And yeah, so we're gonna walk around this today. So hopefully you can hear me clearly from all the way back here. My microphone's quite far away, so you know I'll do my best. I'm actually quite I'm actually shouting right now to, to be heard properly. But anyway, so this is a solid pine table. Now pine's a relatively cheap wood, but you can do a hell of a lot with it, and these tables are solid still, even though it's a relatively cheap soft wood. And these are very popular on Amazon, these particular tables. This is called a Corona furniture table. I think that's what it's referred to on Amazon, at least a Corona table. And there's a lot of different ranges, but this is the coffee table that, that they sell. And yeah, actually, no, sorry, it's a Mercer Corona coffee table. That's the one. And these are very popular. Obviously, they're very nice to look at. They're very, very pretty tables. And they make very ideal retro gaming coffee tables because A, they are cheap, B, it's made out of pine, so it's nice soft wood, easy to cut and easy to work with, and yeah, very good. So, as you can see, it doesn't look an awful lot different. Obviously, I've got a cutout in here in the middle, and this display here is an IPS display. Now, the reason I use an IPS display is because it provides very good viewing angles. Now the reason you want good viewing angles is because say you're playing just like I am now. If this was a TFT screen for example, it would look a bit crap. Um, the viewing angles on those screens are awful. They are cheap at the end of the day. But IPS displays don't do that and you get very good viewing angles out of it. Now this is still an old IPS display. It has the VGA port etc on it. But for what it, for what it costs, and what it can do, it's a great monitor for what you want it for. And it's very big as well, it's a 22 inch screen and it fits just into this table just perfectly. Now the cutout here was made using a router saw and you could use a skill saw or if you if you can, you can find yourself a local laser cutting company and you get this really perfect. But I've just got a router and there's a lot of knots in this wood so it did make cutting a little bit difficult so it's not the perfect cut ever but you know it kind of keeps in with the the rest of the table it's very rustic rough round the edges kind of thing so it goes nicely with the rest of the table and I've got no issues at all with it and yeah so in its current state with the table top down I would refer to this as like kind of in, ca in arcade mode if you like and on the front here, we've got a controller. It's actually built into the drawer, and you've got your joystick, etc. I'll get onto that in a second. But in this current state, you'd use it for arcade games, you know, main main ROMs, etc. The second one, it's not quite finished yet, but on the front, we'll have a USB input, and that's on its way very soon. And I'll put that in, and then you can use it like this. So you lift up. And in this state, we could, use, we could plug in our Xbox controller and yeah, use it basically to play your PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, Nintendo, whatever. And yeah, so there's two different modes. And yeah, so let's move on to the back and I'll show you what I've done with all the equipment that's powering this thing. So in the actual coffee table itself, we have everything nicely, neatly aligned. Now, these pieces of wood here is actually the support bracket for the back of the screen. That took a lot of work, that did. That was a hell of a lot of work. And yeah, to get it strong enough to actually support this screen like it is, 
Yeah, that took some thinking because what I wanted to achieve was to install the screen so it could be removed easily in the future. If the screen broke or something happened to it or you wanted to replace it for a better one. So that was a lot of work. Not done that before. So yeah, we achieved that eventually. Normally I would have just, you know, heavily glued it in, etc. But you know, I wanted that more elegant, elegant <laughs> solution to the problem. So anyway, we've done that. Now, as you can see, this is our rear controller and we'll get onto that in a second. And we've got our speakers here. We've got our wiring routed nicely, it's nice and neat. You won't be able to see this on camera, but we've got our plastic back panel just here. And this protects the actual power input just on the back here. And we'll show you that in a second. Um, we've not finished a few things, there's still power supply still hanging down. Now this is powered by Raspberry Pi, so this Raspberry Pi is just gonna sit on the side here. And that's the Raspberry Pi Model 3B and it's more than powerful enough to what we want to do. Um, and it'll run pretty much most games. Retro Pi, for example, will, you know, do pretty much everything. We've got these very strong supports. We've got two of these. These are very expensive, these are really expensive. But, you know, you can't really skimp when you want them to support all this weight, especially when we've got our plastic panel on the top. To finish it off, it's gonna be a heavy thing. So, you know, these are very strong, but very expensive as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the internals of it. Oh, there's a lot of uh, there's a few things to do There's a few things to stick down, but it's relatively finished and yeah So this is the actual main control if you like it's the arcade we've got your joystick etc Now this isn't finished yet. Obviously, we've got a few things to do yet now I was in two minds whether to actually make create a mechanism where you would pull it out and this would pull up like that. But I'm I'm not convinced that's the best solution to be honest with you. I think that it, it does look it does actually look a little bit cramped. I mean for my little hands it's not too much of an issue. I'll be quite happy playing here, but if you've got bigger hands than me then maybe you want this to be actually up like that, if that makes sense to you, you've got more space on the side here. Now, it's not here yet, but I've got some magnets coming, and the magnets will basically allow this to clip onto the top there, and then it'll hold this in place. Now, if I made a mechanism, which is relatively simple to do, to actually pull this out, and while you, when you're pulling it out, it pulls it up like that, if I did that, then it would kind of take away the two options that are, that are kind of available right now to whoever whoever buys this off me, basically, because this will be up for sale at some point. And it kind of takes that option away from them. Now, this controller is using a... Obviously, we've got our, our joystick here. We've got our, our buttons here. We've got buttons on the front, start and select, etc. Now that's powered by a little board. Now the little board basically converts all these cables, all these wires in here, and it converts it into a USB, and the USB just plugs into the Raspberry Pi. It's very simple, it's a very basic setup, but it does the job and it, and it works really well. It's, it's instant, um, it's a zero delay system, so there's no delay between the inputs, etc. Now, the final thing I'm waiting for is obviously it's just that magnet and as well as that once once my USB input as well is here then you can use the um, the PlayStation Dreamcast and Nintendo mode whatever so when the screen's up should look like that. But this table's pretty much finished. All I need now is my plastic top and that's on its way and yeah. So anyway let's show you this turned on. 